Something unusual is happening in the flight world, and it begins with a question most people never think to ask. Personal aircraft, as handy as a private automobile, and demonstrated this possible use with their first successful helicopters. What if vertical flight did not need a spinning rotor above your head, a long tail to handle torque, or a body that must tilt forward to move? What if an aircraft could hover like it was pinned in space, drift sideways without effort, and rotate smoothly while staying fully upright? It sounds unreal, yet it is now real. Tempted to solve the numerous problems that were encountered. Many design variations were tried most with very limited success. After a century of frustration, broken prototypes, and abandoned dreams, a strange idea has finally lifted from the ground and proved itself. The old idea that seemed impossible. When we picture vertical flight, we all imagine the same thing. A helicopter rising straight up, its giant rotor slicing the air, the tail rotor fighting the twisting force that would otherwise spin the entire aircraft around. This design has defined vertical flight for generations, and most people assume it is the only way such motion is possible. But in 1909, a Russian engineer named Epkovi proposed something radically different. His aircraft used rotating cylinders lined with vertical blades, almost like the paddle wheels of a riverboat turned upright. The idea was so unexpected that even early aviation pioneers did not know how to classify it. Engineers in Russia, Germany, and the United States tried to build machines based on his concept, but every attempt failed dramatically. The vertical blades bent under intense centrifugal forces. The early ties snapped or ruptured. The frames twisted under their own weight long before the machine could leave the ground. Worse, the aircraft needed constant tiny adjustments to stay balanced. The early 20th century had no electronic control systems to manage those rapid changes. Pilots had no chance of controlling it. By the 1950s, the concept was no longer treated as a bold idea. It became a form of aviation folklore, a strange footnote mentioned only as a warning. Engineers called it an example of clever thinking that led nowhere. People believed the idea itself was flawed when, in reality, the world simply lacked the tools needed to make it work. The strange idea that found new life in water. Then, something unexpected happened. The idea did not disappear. Instead, it resurfaced in a completely different field. In the 1920s, Austrian engineer Ernst Schneider explored the same basic principle, but applied it to marine propulsion. He created the Voith Schneider propeller, a rotating disc with vertical blades whose pitch could be changed instantly. The moment it reached the water, the design proved its worth. Ships equipped with this propeller began to move in ways no one had seen before. Tugboats could slide sideways into a narrow space at a pier or turn around almost in place. Rescue boats could hold their exact position in violent ocean currents where normal propellers lost control. Ferries could maneuver with incredible accuracy at low speeds. The design became so reliable that it turned into a standard piece of equipment for vessels that worked near ports or dangerous coasts. The physics that failed in the air succeeded brilliantly in water. The reasons were simple. Water is thick, heavy, and predictable. It provides resistance. It gives feedback. Air does not. The air is thin, unstable, and unforgiving. The old flying idea was not wrong. It was simply trying to survive in an environment that demanded far better materials, faster motors, and smarter control systems than early engineers had access to. To fly a cyclorotor, people needed ultralight composites, high-speed actuators, sensors capable of reading airflow in real time, and processors able to make hundreds of adjustments every second. Until those existed, the concept never stood a chance. The world had solved the idea in water, but the sky still waited. The first true breakthrough in air. That long wait ended in 2011. At China's Northwestern Polytechnical University, researchers built a small cyclocopter and performed something once thought impossible. They flew it untethered. It was not graceful. It was not powerful. But it flew, and it stayed in the air under its own control. That simple moment changed everything. A concept abandoned for decades suddenly became relevant again. Research groups worldwide took notice. Funding arrived from the US Army, UC Berkeley, and Texas AA and M. Engineers had a clear goal. Create an aircraft that could generate thrust in any direction instantly without tilting its body. 
Such a machine could move through tight spaces, handle chaotic winds, and solve problems that helicopters and drones struggled with. At Texas A&M's Advanced Vertical Flight Lab, Professor Noble Benedict and his team began building cyclocopters of many sizes. They made an important discovery. The smaller the cyclocopter, the better it behaved. At very small scales, the airflow became smoother, and tiny vortices formed around the blades, improving stability and lift. Their smallest working model weighed only 29 grams, lighter than a golf ball. Yet it could hover at odd angles, remain stable in swirling gusts, and handle sudden changes in direction with surprising control. This proved that the idea was not only valid, but also offered unique benefits. Still, small models were not enough. Many aviation concepts work perfectly at tiny sizes, and then collapse when scaled up. As a pilot, I became impressed on how safe and performant cyclorotors are. Early cyclocopter attempts in the 20th century had failed for that exact reason. The next step required something more ambitious. The full-scale success that changed everything. In Austria, a company called Cyclotech spent more than 15 years solving the core mechanical issue that defeated earlier inventors. Instead of rushing to build a complete aircraft, they focused entirely on perfecting the cyclorotor. They redesigned linkages so they could shift blade pitch instantly without tearing them apart. They tested countless blade shapes to find the most stable and efficient form. They built rapid response actuators capable of adjusting blade angles in milliseconds. They turned to carbon fiber and advanced composites to survive the enormous forces created by high-speed rotation. After hundreds of experiments and more than 800 successful flights with smaller test vehicles, they introduced a machine that no one expected to see so soon. It was called Blackbird, a full-scale cyclocopter weighing 340 kilograms. Blackbird's first flight was smooth, controlled, and steady. It rose straight up without tilting. It hovered as if frozen in space. It drifted sideways with ease. It rotated while staying perfectly upright. It could break in mid-air without pitching forward like a helicopter. This flight, completed in 2025, made Blackbird the first large-scale cyclocopter in history to fly successfully. Engineers who once dismissed the idea as impossible now had to rethink everything. The strange paddlewheel aircraft from old drawings had finally become a working machine. It proved that with the right materials, electronics, and design, the cyclorotor could achieve stable flight at full scale, something once believed unachievable. The future and the final challenge ahead. Blackbird's success opens doors that traditional rotorcraft cannot pass through. In search and rescue missions, where helicopters struggle in tight valleys or chaotic winds, a cyclocopter could move with ease and hold any position with precision. It could reach places that are too dangerous or too narrow for a tilting aircraft. In military reconnaissance, a small, hand-launched cyclocopter could slip between buildings, hover without noise spikes, and return safely without revealing its direction of approach. In future city air mobility, where safety and noise reduction matter more than speed, a craft that can maneuver without tilting could operate in tight spaces between buildings or above crowded areas with far less risk. But one major challenge remains. The scaling problem continues to shape the future of this technology. At small sizes, the cyclorotor is efficient, light, and highly responsive. At large sizes, weight increases rapidly. Forces on the blades and linkages grow sharply. Materials must be strong, yet extremely light. Every gram matters. If engineers can fully solve the scaling issue, cyclocopters could become common tools for rescue, transport, and inspection. If not, they may remain specialized machines with unique advantages, but limited roles. Still, the progress made so far is remarkable. A concept once viewed as a mistake now has working prototypes, advanced materials, real funding, and growing interest worldwide. A century ago, this idea had no chance. The motors were weak, the frames were heavy, and the controls were too slow. Yet the concept survived, carried by engineers who refused to let it fade. 
Today, the cyclocopter has flown at full scale, and the strange aircraft that once embarrassed its inventors now stands as proof that forgotten ideas can return stronger than ever. Whether it becomes a major part of aviation or remains a specialized tool is uncertain, but the fact that it flies at all is a reminder that even the most unlikely ideas can shape the future of flight.